Well, praise the Lord, we're just here tonight just to uh, share with you some things the Lord really had on my heart. Uh, he's been placing some things very heavy in uh, my spirit about the uh, <clears throat> upcoming elections and things that are going on. I have so many people asking, you know, what are we supposed to do um, with what's going on? You know, who do we vote for? Uh, what direction should we go? Well, I can just tell you tonight that uh, God is doing... Uh, a miraculous work behind the scenes and he wants us to understand that he has everything in control uh, we need to be praying for the specifics of not so much who is supposed to be into power but who God wants to direct that's going to be into our um, uh, political leadership of our country because it's going to be very uh, it's going to be a priority and it's going to be very important of who gets into the office uh, the strategicness is that we got to understand that we're at the pinnacle or the tipping point right now of what's taking uh, uh, place here in America and also around the world. That God is calling many of His leaders <clears throat> in the in the body of Christ and also those that have been sitting back, waiting to see what God had next or what the Holy Spirit was going to do. When He has called us to come together and to be as one, I uh, was listening uh, at a report tonight on uh, one of the television news stations and said that Iowa was one of the most important states um, in the political realm right now of tipping uh, the United States. Well, I just wanted to confirm what the Lord has been doing in Iowa with the move of God since September of 2011 uh, when he sent me out here. There had been many have been praying for a specific change. Now, some had been praying. Uh, there's pastors and leaders. We're going to have them on uh, some of the talk show um, on the Ustream channel and also on some of the other channels and, and the YouTube. Uh, we're going to interview and have some of these pastors on with us sometime that will share with you uh, what the Lord had showed them. Some of them had had uh, words for many years that the Pope was going to be coming to Iowa and uh, they was preparing themselves uh, across the state for the Vatican to come to America and for what reason they didn't know if God was going to use the Vatican for something. Uh, and then they found out uh, in September of this year, uh, when the Lord had sent me to the heartland of America, how my last name is Pope, and they realized that there was much more significant to it, that it was not about the Pope, the Vatican, but it was about one of God's saints, one of his servants, and uh, just someone that loved the Lord and heard the Lord's voice speak to him very clearly two years ago about coming to the heartland of America because God was going to be changing this land. And uh, as he changed the heart of America and he touches the heart of man, then our hearts begin to sequenize and then we can come together as one connected to Christ our Lord and Savior. I want to share with you a couple scriptures uh, that really sticks out because a lot of people are facing trials and tribulations and things right now. They don't know which way to go. And uh, over in James, 1 James, it says, The testing of your faith, count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds I wanna just ask you a question we don't have to pray for patience we don't have to ask God for patience God will uh, genuinely promise uh, through the word that patience are gonna come through the trials and tribulations that we go through I think we need to also understand that the most important part of our lifestyle should be a living witness and a living sacrifice unto Christ we Excuse me, we get to a place sometimes that we get um, weary and well-doing. We forget and we try to go out and try to build and establish credibility. We try to build platforms for ourselves. We even try to attempt to do things that are not yet time to do. And we abort uh, many of those circumstances and situations of breakthrough in our lives. There's some great things that's ahead. Uh, yes, there's going to be trials and tribulations. Yes, there's going to be hardship in America. Uh, but for the Christians, those that will come together, one mind and one accord, and start laying down doctrines and laying down denominational barriers and beginning to love and consider each other, that you'll even see racism and hatred and anger and division. You'll see all that just fall by the wayside, and you'll see such a directive purpose of power, how God delivers His power to those that are in unity. Um, I know that there's some other things that the Lord's wanting to do 
in the days ahead for us. And uh, the only way that he can do those things is if we're willing to lay down our selfishness and our self-righteousness. I think there's going to be, uh, in this next um, six-month period, there's going to be a major, major shift that many people are going to have uh, delirious minds and get uh, distracted, uh, especially those that are supposed to be intercessors and prayer warriors um, in the church body. Uh, some are not filled with the Holy Spirit. They're not even recognized the Holy Spirit, and they wonder why they're powerless. That everything they pray and everything they do, uh, they don't it come, don't come to pass. Sometimes they get frustrated. I was on the uh, I was on the phone with a uh, a young lady that I've known for years, uh, and she was in ministry and things, and she was just telling me how she was so depressed, and she had been going through a lot, and she just totally lo lost all love and consideration for mankind because of some of the things that's happened in church, some of the things that's happened to her in the ministry, and also uh, in her family's lives and things that they're going through on a daily basis. As we begin to pray, there was a breakthrough and an energetic uh, influctuation of heaven to earth, and she began to be set free immediately, and God restored her vision and her dreams, and then he spoke to her about something that happened 20 years ago in her life, and it was a time, she said, where she had an abortion and there was things that went on in her life that brought depression and anger and a lot of bitterness and she would never open up and she wondered why she had been going through all these things. And when the Lord spoke to her about the 20 years uh, prior in her life, 20 years ago, that what something that happened strategic that she knows, immediately she confessed it, shared with it uh, to me and then we was able to pray for it and God released her. Uh, with a greater anointing to be able to do the things for his kingdom. I give God all the glory for what he does and what he says. He sent me out here to shake the foundations of religion, shake the foundations of the heart of America, and to bring forth a justification of his love and his, his honor and his power uh, and trust in us and through us so we would begin to love and honor and trust one another. I think the Lord is doing such a great work. Not only in my heart he is, but he's doing it in a lot of people's heart here in the Midwest and across the nation. Uh, speaking with some pastors this week, they had asked me what the Lord was saying for the new year, 2012. I want to share with you very uh, briefly of some of the things that the Holy Spirit was speaking to me uh, in the last week and how he has very much uh, gave me a download or a pour, uh, portal from heaven of some things that... Uh, not only have been taking place, but things that are taking place and going to take place in this new year. Uh, many people have come up to us out here in the Midwest and shared with us how God had shaken the foundations of their lives. Uh, pastors have come up and said, from the time you got here uh, and called us out at the Salvation Army or this church or that church, how things have changed within our local body and also in our lives. And I give God the glory for that. But I want to let you know that it's not just about... Roger Pope coming to Iowa uh, here in America, but I want to let you know that it's it's Roger Pope's just another one that has heard the voice of God, that is willing to lay down his family, his life, and everything to do the work of the kingdom. So there shall be many that are set free uh, be, because of the obedience of myself and many others out there that, and to the sound of my voice, that knows that God has a, has a calling on your life and he's got many things for you to do. But you really haven't been stepping out by faith in doing those things. I'm not saying you have to quit your job, sell your business, or uh, uh, you know leave your family. I'm telling you to be uh, aware that there is changes coming uh, to those who live uh, in Christ Jesus. Number one, um, Christ should come first in your life, and uh, your family and the rest of things in your life shall come second. Ministry shall be after your family. And some people say, well, you said you left your family. No, I didn't leave my family. I spoke to my family about the Lord sending me to Iowa. And uh, there was an agreement. And uh, she, even my wife, uh, even spoke and said, you know, you think you're coming back in a week, but God is going to keep you there longer. Well, little do we know, sometimes we speak things. And uh, we speak them out of the unction of the, the presence and the Spirit of God. And, and she was right about that after the week. Uh, so from September 9th to the 18th, I thought I was leaving. Uh, God had already had things lined up for me to stay, and many things has happened from there. Um, and the rest is history. Hallelujah. We praise God for the move of God in the cities out here in Iowa. 
Uh, many cities are being touched, towns, little villages. Uh, people's lives are being transformed, changed, rearranged, many healings and miracles and things that are taking place. But we're not here to look for signs and wonders. Uh, those things shall follow those that preach the gospel. So I look at this, why don't we preach the gospel instead of our own doctrine? Why don't we preach the gospel instead of our own denominational ways? Why don't we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ instead of sitting around talking about all the things that's not happening in the world? Why don't we talk about the things that are for the kingdom of God? Why don't we talk about the things that are going on in those that are on the streets feeding the hungry and those that are outside the four walls of the local church? But I won't get into that today. I just want to share with you and challenge you. Uh, if you're a pastor or you're a leader or you're somebody that's in a leadership position of county or state or government, I challenge you today. If you have a, a relationship with Jesus Christ and, and the Lord's really dealing with you about uh, doing more things for Him, and you go back and you listen to what has been said in the past and what people say now about, well, you know, you got to be careful about this and how you say that. And, you know, we see the whole thing with the Tim Tebow. I think Tim is doing great. He needs to continue it. I think if Jesus gets a hold of the football players on the football fields and, uh, and, and gets a hold of uh, those other people out there that, that need Jesus, I think that it's a great witness. Uh, so if, if Tim Tebow... Uh, wants any kind of consideration or, or inspiring words, I'm going to tell him, keep going and preach the word and pray when you want to pray and do what Jesus wants you to do and don't stop because that's the thing that most of us do. We get intimidated by the other things that other people say and what the world says and then we become lymph nodes and we become uh, uh, soul seekers that actually seek out uh, seeker-friendly souls that we can just have in our church to uh, pay the tithes and, and build the buildings and, and bless our paychecks. Hallelujah. Uh, I just want to say that I am not going to hold back from telling the truth. Uh, I love all the pastors. I love uh, the people of God that love Jesus Christ and believe that he died on the cross. I love the unsaved and the saved. I love those that are bound up in sin that need to be set free. And I know Jesus can do it because he's done it for me. So I just want to tell you today that uh, just some inspiring words that God is going to do some miraculous things in this year ahead. Now let me share with you uh, some things that the Holy Spirit was giving me uh, going into uh, 2012 here. And it's going to be inspirational and it's going to be powerful. Uh, some things are going to be very stern that there is a change coming to Iowa and there's a change coming to the United States of America. Great revival is coming. We can also know that he has promised it, he's said in his word, and he'll deliver it. I want to share with you over in 1 Peter 6, it said, In this we rejoice, though now for a little while, it's, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Now, I know what most of us don't understand that when you go through a trial, you know, some people say there might be a death in the family or there might something be happening uh, that really takes and it might even seem like it's torture to you or just uh, suffocation or distraction. But God allows those things to happen sometimes to encourage us and build our faith, to increase our level of faith, to believe for greater things. A lot of times we ever, we want everything like the cherry, uh, the cherry, uh, what do you call a lollipop or an all-day sucker uh, just to sit around and enjoy the sugar and the taste but uh, that is not what uh, we have been called to be Christians for and that's not why we are supposed to sit back and wait uh, tonight I was uh, just empowered by the Holy Spirit I felt like I could just go out and and really uh, preach on the street do what God wanted me to do whether uh, anyone was with me or not and uh, I said, Lord, I'm ready to go in the cold weather or whatever you have for me. And he said, no, I want you to deliver the message. So this is the message tonight, the word that the Lord had given me. Number one, he said, in 2012, the church shall be shaken to the point that people will unbelievably uh, not expect, but many leaders that are pastors and leaders within local churches and denominational churches across this nation are going to be shaken at the foundations of their faith. Many are going to walk away. Many are going to be set aside. Many are going to fall into sin and the temptations of sin. 
that we are going to see such a massive change and transformation in the body of Christ because anything that can be shaken is going to be shaken this coming year. In 2012, 2012, God said uh, specifically, watch my son that the leaders, even in states and government, will begin to be shaken, that they will begin to resign and quit and some even overtaken by stress and the things of uh, temptations and desires of others. In other words, people are going to put so much pressure on some of the leaders uh, in our local government and our state governments and, and our federal government that many are going to uh, begin to decrease uh, in their joy and um, those that are not saved that doesn't know Christ, they're going to come into a time of uh, oppression and depression and also overwhelmed with the pressures of life. So I want to encourage you today that there's some great things that are coming but these are the things that the Lord's speaking directly uh, that we're going to see uh, in 2012. 2012 is going to be the year of government, that God is going to transform and change, where the government of man has been in power and made decisions and, and has messed up the system of God and the kingdom system. God is going to raise up now uh, mouthpieces and voices across this nation around the globe that are going to have prophetic voices to speak into governmental leaders of uh, county and, and city and state and also uh, in our nations. But I see also, uh, as the Lord spoke to me of that, He said there will be great grace that is poured out and there will be many lives that will be changed and also you will see many people that are bound up by the things that they've got tied up. And in other words, we put ourselves in a situation of debt and we can't get out of it because we believe what man says and then when they don't come through with it, we always consider everything that's going to implode upon us, we blame it on someone else instead of saying, well, we didn't go off uh, that decision that was in our heart. We went off of what we heard from man. It's the same way in the church. Uh, you have the people, the kids that go to schools, they say, man, you know, they tell us we can't bring Bibles, we can't pray, we can't do this. You can do all that. You can pray, you can bring your Bibles to school, you can do it all. It's under that that we have that right. Now, Obama just signed this bill that's trying to take the Bill of Rights totally out of the context so we don't have any of that uh, to stand behind us any longer and he can become a king or a dictator uh, and any of that within the government but I want to say this don't believe the lies of leadership of this country pray for them but don't believe the lies they're gonna tell you what they want you to hear if the uh, Christians would come together and the body of Christ would come together that we would begin to build the infrastructure uh, from community to city to state and to government and we would begin to see the people of America take back and begin to restore the laws of our forefathers uh, that come over here and made covenant with God. I want to also share with you tonight if what the Lord said is coming in 2012 is going to be shift of business and opportunity. The Lord said for those that seek after Him, seek His face and His love, and this power that you will begin to see the magnificent work of his hand move and you will see many things that actually take place that you didn't think could even happen the Lord says for the supernatural shall be that that we walk in not the natural but the natural shall become from the supernatural in other words things that we see today and say I wish that person would get out of the wheelchair I wish this uh, bill was paid or I just wish this and we begin to think in our mind that it would be great for it to happen but we just don't see it in the normal. We see it something that would happen and it would be a miracle of God just taking place and it, no man could ever take uh, the consideration for it. But I can tell you this, that God wants to begin to do supernatural things in the natural life that we live. In other words, if we connect our spirit, our faith with Him, with His power, the Holy Spirit will begin to manifest and do those things. We just got to live, uh, be a living witness and be that one that sacrifices our life, like it says over in Romans, and be a living sacrifice. Know that whatever God wants to use you for, your hands, your feet, your mouth, whatever, let Him use you the way that He wants to use you. Don't stop it and do it your way. Stop, go, go into the areas of what God wants you to do and do it. If He tells you to go in and just give somebody a hug, give them a hug. If He tells you to pray for them, pray for them. If He tells you to help someone financially, physically, whatever, just help them. Do whatever God has, has put in your heart to do, and you will see great things come forth. There is another thing that I want to share with you, is get ready to see many nations begin to turn their back on the United States. 
we're going to see the fourth side of the Middle East. It's going to come into a place to where it seems like there's peace, and then there's going to be an uprising in peace and an uprising. And all of a sudden, you're going to see a shattering and a, and a great uh, fluctuation to come against Israel. You're going to see these things come into pass. And in that time, it's not for us to get uh, heavy uh, burdened with it or worry about what is happening. We need to pray specifically for God's will and plan. We need to pray for these things that God has designed to happen to bring forth the fruition of his forecoming of his prosperous blessing of creation. In other words, why he created us for what he knew already that we was going to go through and whatever God wants. We need to pray, God, this is your will and your plan. Then we stand behind it. Even if it don't look right, we need to Give God the praise because he has a great work for us to be involved in for fulfilling the kingdom of God. Now I want to uh, share with you also, there's some things the Lord spoke to me about uh, having an adoptive spirit that the church needs to adopt. Uh, the, the spirit of adoption, we need to adopt it and not only for kids, but also for people in the street, uh, for the prisons, uh, for the schools and our youth and our children. We need to adopt a spirit of love and compassion for the gang members and the, and the people that are bound up in the sin of this world. And we need to step outside the four walls and come together, church to church, body to body, family to family. And we need to start going out into the streets, the highways and byways and fulfilling the love and the compassion to bring honor and trust into the kingdom of God. We need to reach those souls. And the way that we're going to disciple them is we got to show them a lifestyle of discipling. Discipling means that we need to go out and we need to teach them the ways of Christ so they can walk and stand up. We can go out and win souls, but if you're not discipling those souls that you win, I'm sorry, there's there's a neglecting taking place. People say, what do you believe about this and that and the other? Well, I believe there's ministries that are called to save souls, but I also believe that one part of that is you can't just go and win souls, that you got to find those that are disciples to actually link in. So if you go out there, you got teams of people and some of them that's with you might be those that stay behind to get names and numbers to follow up. Those might be connecting pieces. However it might be, we need to get to the place to where we don't leave too many gaps behind. That's like I said, you know, you can go out in the streets and preach the gospel. You can tell people they need to be saved. You can condemn them and do whatever you want to do. But then you got to look in the mirror at night and recognize Everything I preach today, am I living it? Is it in me or am I doing what I'm preaching? Am I living what I'm preaching or I'm just preaching something that I'm not even living? God is wanting to challenge us in 2012 of these things to start changing. That we would recognize our faults and our wrongdoing so we would start doing better for his kingdom and we would begin to advance and be a blessing Another thing the Lord was speaking to me about this year, prepare for the cities of refuge to take their course. If we would take refuge in the love of God, then we would begin to do the things that God's called us to do. But he showed me, before I come out here uh, to Iowa, he said that this would be a land of refuge and that there would be cities of refuge all over the Iowa and, and the heartbeat or the heartland of America would have cities that pop up and that the refugees that he was showing me was there's a day of shaking coming to America and it's going to be not only in the business world and not only in and uh, in the church and and the ministries of revival and things going on but there was going to be people because of those things happening they're going to come from the east and they're going to come from the west and God's going to bring them together and you're going to begin to see people that flood to the heart of America and all it is is a symbol or sign that what is happening is there's things that are beginning to shift underneath them. Things around them are beginning to shift. Businesses, jobs, all these things are beginning to shift to a point to where everyone is going to begin to flee to one location to where God's presence and power is. Is he going to be only in Iowa? No. Iowa is just the heartbeat, just the starting of the rhythm of America. It's the boom, 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 boom. All over America... God's heartbeat is beginning to build a new rhythm to the earth. The earth is beginning to breathe differently than it's breathed before. And all of a sudden you're going to see what comes out of Iowa is going to be a demonstration in the natural and in the supernatural. You're going to see it spread across America 
from C to signing C, and there's going to be state after state just come under uh, consuming fires of revival and a moves of God in the cities and in the county and the rural areas. You're going to see uh, all different whites, blacks, and yellows coming together. The fulfillment of this, and as I said before, you know, as I say, even when I'm in the inner cities and stuff, I tell all the people, don't worship what you think would be godliness is as a man or in a man unless you see the signs of blessing that comes along with it. You know, there's a lot of people that worship Martin Luther King, and that is not, Martin Luther King is not a god. He was a prophetic prophet that was called to this earth to bring forth unity amongst all colors and ethnic backgrounds, and what many have done is they've lifted him on a pedestal and they've made him their god. And we need to, we need to thank the Lord and honor the Lord for everything that was was in him and, and through him, the giftings, the talents, the, the favor. But we don't need to worship Martin Luther King. I'm telling you, what everybody is fighting in the battlefields of the inner cities of America is they look at Martin Luther King greater than a man called uh, um, uh, William Seymour. William Seymour had the greatest move that ever reached across this land, and it's still today has has reached over 600 million that is involved in from that move but you don't see him being lifted up he was an african-american man and he was out in california when the azusa street started that was his obedience to god how that started now understand this this is back in the early 1900s and i'm telling you from that point people just put him in the corner shoved him under a table somewhere but when a man comes out and begins to do something in the natural for the political end of field and to bring unity of the political in, then all of a sudden we see how arrogance and pride and, and racism and all that is still around because if they would honor and respect Martin Luther King and, and thank the Lord for all that he did for the kingdom of God and to build unity amongst mankind in America and around this nation, it would be a totally different concept. You wouldn't have black town and white town and, and Hispanic town and and this town and that town and all that other, you would have people that would live together just as, as the prophetic word come out of him when he said he had a dream on the mall up in, in Washington, when he had a dream, and the dream was that all mankind would come together, that they would eat together, that they would ride buses, they would go to school, they would do, well, we've seen that come to a certain point, but because people didn't catch the revelation of it they just caught the information there's a lot of constipation that's going on people are just filled up with a bunch of junk and people hear this and hear that go to the library and read some of the the writings of Martin Luther King Jr. that never was published there's a lot of good stuff in there about his relationship with God and there's a lot of good things that he wrote that was so impacting that would have brought so much revelation and understanding that people would have been activated to do things differently but today we have people still standing today Black, white, yellow, or green. We have them out there that is caught up in the deception of that generational curse of everyone standing and worshiping a man or worshiping a woman or worshiping a ministry. <clears throat> we need to get away from that, making these things our idols. I want to tell you that in 2012, God is bringing down that level of arrogance. He's taking people off the platform and putting them back on the placemats. He's beginning to shift and change the environment of even those people that didn't even know what happened or how it happened, he's bringing a challenge to them to say, are you truly doing what I've called you to do? Are you doing things my way or are you doing them your way? In Isaiah 55, 8 and 9, it talks about, that's what he said. My ways are not your ways. Your ways are not my ways. My ways are higher than your ways. So, well, number one, we need to get to the place of understanding what Isaiah uh was saying because it was very powerful that we recognize that it's not God God doesn't look at what we do and and then when we ask him to bless our ways he comes down and blesses no we we fight and we battle with our own self half the time like Paul was writing because number one we want to do something and then ask God to bless it we want to just make a decision and then ask God to be involved in the decision when first we should be praying and then God will give us the leadership and the guidance of what direction to take. Amen? Also wanted to go and, and, and just read another scripture here that goes in with what the Lord's saying. is in 2 Peter 2 and 9. It says, Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous 
under punishment until the day of judgment. Can I tell you something? God's hand is upon the godly. Those that are saints and servants of God and those that doesn't know the Lord, there is a chance and a time that is coming that he's going to release his blessing. And I believe God's going to give every opportunity. But one thing that we can't deny in the body of Christ is if we take the word of God and we say, this is the Bible. This is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Well, so help me God. If it is, then why do we have denominational barriers? Why do we have people that, you know, I'm a Baptist and you're a Methodist, so we can't go to church together. You have, you know, 1,700 churches in your city and and not none of them are full of people because every one of them is battling the circumstances of not having signs and wonders follow them. Why? Because they don't even, they're powerless. They don't even have the power to pray and believe by faith. Why? Because number one, they've listened to man's ways so long that they've got so far away from God's ways. Let's take this and say from Genesis to Revelations, this is God's word. So why would we have a, a time that we would just consider this, this here? Consider your ways, it says over in Haggai, consider your ways. Okay, we're just going to take the Bible and we're going to take out what scriptures we don't want. Well, we just become one another one of those religious cults then. Because number one, the Bible says that you don't take anything out of or add anything to the word, right? Well, number one, if we don't, and we don't take anything out, and we don't add anything to it, then why do so many churches have a problem with the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> they preach the day of Pentecost, but they don't live the day of Pentecost. They preach this, and they don't live that. I want to know this. If God has called you to minister the Word of God, then preach the gospel for what's in here. Not what's here, what's in here. Share what God has put inside of you, but make sure it lines up with the Word of God. Because this is the word of God. Not this, this. If you want to speak the word of God, you got to have the word of God in you. Put it in your heart. Hello. So I want to just bring to your attention that in 2012 there's going to be a lot of change. A lot of governmental change. It's going to be a lot of balance. You know, this is going to be one of the most strategic uh, um, uh, candidacies uh, for president that we've ever seen. There's going to be so many corruptive things. You're going to see Obama do things that he... He is going to be uh, crazy and wild about doing, trying to spare and, and keep position and power. And uh, I, I wouldn't say it's the man that does it, but it's the spirits that are leading the man. And God wants you to understand that we need godly men and women to stand in our leadership, not only in our house and our senate and places. We need godly leadership to stand up and say, in God we trust, but in the Holy Spirit we trust, in the power of God we trust, and in prayer we trust. We don't trust in it through some other man or some other religion. We trust in it through Jesus Christ, the power and the, the, the finisher and the author and the finisher of our faith. That's who we trust in. And we need leaders in America because this was a nation. One nation under God. It wasn't many nations under one God. It was one nation under God. So... Most people want to divide up, say, well, we're made up of many nations. Well, you have many nations, many cultures and everything here. But we are America. We are the nation of America, the USA, United States of America. So don't forget that, okay? And I really, truly believe that we are going to also see uh, storms and, and things that rumors of, of wars and things that's going to be taking place. We've seen it in Revelations. We know that the Word speaks of it, but we also know that there's a transformation of power that's taking place in the atmosphere. I told people when I come out here, I said it's going to be a different, a different uh, winter. It's going to be a different time in the season. God's shifting seasons across America and around the world. And uh, people are saying, Roger, thank you for praying. You're keeping the snow away. It's awesome. But you know what? I just believe this. Whether it is to do with God sending me here, praise God, that just gives him the glory. But I can tell you this, I believe that the Holy Spirit has spoke to me. And I just did not know in the natural why I was coming to Iowa. But in the spiritual, my spirit already knew why God was sending me here. My spirit already knew the reasoning why. But see, my flesh, my mind was not lining up with my heart or my spirit. I just went ahead and said, you know what, God's calling me, I got to go. And so I laid down everything and I come out here and little to be known that God speaks to our spirit and he speaks to our heart. So number one, we need to realize sometimes that yes, there is timing 
and everything. There's seed time and harvest. And God is beginning to increase the timeliness of what happens. He's just shifted this weather because of the shift that's taken place. Uh, he's opening the doors so it would be nicer out here for what's going on, not only for the elections, but more so for the revivals and the meetings and the transformation of the city to city. Waterloo and Cedar Falls are beginning to come into a transformation in a period of time where they're seeing change. God's moving on the hearts of pastors and leaders. He's shaking the cities in the Cedar Valley area. Uh, we're moving into Ra uh, uh, Cedar Rapids. and Things are going to be happening this coming week. Um, tomorrow night, Monday, the 2nd of January, 2012, uh, 7 p.m., we start uh, the gathering meetings. Uh, the gathering, gathering is to really infiltrate and begin to build and establish a citywide revival down in the Cedar Rapids area. And then the Lord has spoken to me and said that we will be going to uh, Des Moines. And the Des Moines, Ankeny, and that area over there is going to be em embalmed and, and uh, totally uh, shaken at the foundations of every barrier. God's going to restore a lot of historical um, buildings, uh, assets of things that was done before. I think there was some great leaders that's been in this state over the years. The great revivals has taken place over the years here. But God is going to bring a revival to this nation now that no one can stop. This is going to be a revival that's not going to be about a name of a man or a name of a woman or name of a ministry. It's going to be a people that come together through all different denominations, all different ethnic backgrounds, all different cultures from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. And they're going to begin to come together with the hunger and the heartbeat of God. And there's going to be great revival that is going to take place here in America. And I believe God just put his finger on Iowa and he's beginning to shake Iowa at the foundations of its roots. You know, there's so many symbolic things that are taking place in the natural and also now in the supernatural here in Iowa and across the, the heartland of America. Know this, there's no longer going to be the, the big eyes and the little U's. There's not going to be the large metropolitan churches that stand the ground and take forth the glory uh, of the people. That God is going to begin to bring great fires within the small churches and the small congregations also. And there's going to be moves of God all over cities. It won't just be one church that's on fire. It'll be many churches, many local congregations that are going to be on fire in cities. Small towns and big cities and also in metropolitan uh, uh, cities and places. So prepare yourself for change is coming to America. 2012 is going to be the shaking of the foundations of new works and new miracles, signs and wonders taking place. People are going to be walking into hospitals and laying hands on the sick and they will recover quickly. There will be an acceleration of miracles and signs and wonders on the streets and restaurants and housing development. I just see home, home centers where people begin to come together, uh, church members and people come together in homes for prayer meetings during the week and, and Bible studies and and just to increase the level of uh, relationship within the local body so it begins to increase the level of connection and, and communication in the, in the larger body. So when we come together in local churches that there will be more of an expectation, acceleration of expectation of people hungry to be trained and equipped to send out and to do more things for the kingdom of the Lord. And I just think this, that great things are yet to come. I believe that we need to dedicate uh, many things that the Lord has done already. We need to dedicate them and praise God for them and give Him the glory and quit taking the glory from those things. Amen. I just see also that there's going to be a uh, change within the food uh, system that uh, not only our farming and our agriculture is going to begin to shift. There's going to be battlefields. There's going to be battles between uh, government and state and state and city and, and county and city and you're going to start seeing battles within each state and across this nation for the food and, and the water sources and the things that are out there, uh, ammunition and guns and things that you would use to supply your family uh, food from wildlife. And, and there's going to be more and more control that you see come from the government that tries to take out and tries to hold back all the freedoms that we have. You're going to begin to see that in 2012. This is going to be a year of transformation, trials, tribulations, also, it's going to be a year of triumph for many that have just totally laid their life down and begin to pour out their heart to the Lord 
for him to fill it and to begin to bring blessing and empower and strength through the Holy Spirit. He's going to empower you and give you wisdom and grace uh, in this new year. Prepare yourself for things that are going to be released. Uh, not only money and houses and land and finance, vehicles and other things that's going to be released. But this shall be a year that you don't just take those things for granted. You don't take them and turn them around when you got to give your manna. You don't take the manna and turn around and sell it or give it away. The manna is for you to live off of and to be blessed with. And there's going to be times that God gives you something that it might be a tool or an instrument to be used for bartering, uh, for you to donate or give and to be given something that you have need of. But God is going to begin to work on the hearts of man to teach us how to begin to work together hand in hand. And that way when we get, begin to grow down the road, you'll see small farms begin to produce food and local restaurants buy from it. You'll see other people uh, within the community begin to grow gardens and stuff and, and they'll supply a certain type of product. Uh, they might be growing beef or they might be growing different types of poultry at farms and they might be supplying the need and the demand within the local. You're going to see more and more shift back to the local people and the local community uh, in America to re-establish the foundation, the credibility, and uh, be able to have a voice as this nation comes one nation under God. We have to come back together uh, in small communities uh, to begin to develop the family values and the strong uh, cores of core values of what our forefathers placed here in America. So. We have a lot of good things that are ahead. It's going to be a year of great expectation. I want to encourage you. I didn't uh, want to speak anything that was uh, doom and gloom because that's not how I see it. Yes, trials and tribulations are going to come in greater levels. But let me tell you something. Bigger devils are going to fall quicker because of the power and the authority that God has given us, uh, the body of Christ. So coming to you from the uh, central Iowa or southeastern area of Iowa, I just want to share with you that God loves you, and He really does, and He has a powerful plan for your life. He's got great things in store. I thank you for uh, just watching this video and taking the time and expressing uh, the values that God has put within me to share with you some of the things that's going to happen in 2012. Get ready, get ready, get ready, and prepare yourself for the days ahead. Ready or not, guess what's coming? The power and the manifest presence of God is coming to your town and your city. And it won't be long that fires are starting all over Iowa and they're going to spread across the nation. God's already sparking fires and kindling fires uh, that are all over the nation, but it's not going to be the old ways. We're not going to have it one man, one ministry, uh, one woman uh, in powership of this thing. It's going to be different ministers ministering at these revival meetings and city people coming together from different congregations, different ministers, different denominations, different even ethnic backgrounds. They're going to begin to come together in one mind and one accord, and we're going to have this nation is going to experience acts. The, the, the time of the day of Pentecost is going to come in America to where the, you're going to see the manifestation of God's presence across this land and even in businesses and jobs and things uh, that we uh, have planted our place uh, daily uh, and been involved in to uh, make needs and, and uh, meet needs through the revenue that God has prepared uh, in the ways ahead. I love you. I thank you. Hopefully you get to see this. Uh, we're going to be meeting from the 2nd of January 2012 through the 6th of January. That's Monday through Friday, January 12th from at 7 p.m. We will probably be either on this channel. Uh, we'll have to check and see uh, ahead. But I believe we're going to be live uplinks on Ustream, um, God of this city, Ustream, God of this city, uh, 2011. It's God of this city, 2011, on Ustream is the channel. Or we might even be on uh, uh, the YouTube and placing some other things. But you can go to www.heartsandsequence.com. Uh, That's www.heartsandsequence.com is the website and go to the events and meetings uh, page and you'll see uh, any updates and stuff will be on there or either the front page uh, and also you can go over to contacts and you can email us uh, let you know or let us know if, if God's healed you if he set you free if there's things that's happened why uh, the meetings have been going on around Iowa 
whatever God's done in your life, whatever circumstance you've prayed for, or whatever situation that you've been healed of, just put it on there. Email us and let us know so we can put that in our files and begin to share that uh, on the website with others. So I just want to bless you. Thank you for taking the time to listen and uh, being a part of what God's doing. Jump in feet first and let the fire of God take its way in your life. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.